How to plumb a bathroom. That is one of the biggest questions that we're asked, God, not just on social media, but people calling up here. How do you plumb a bathroom? Plumbing a bathroom, really, it starts with the toilet. This is your largest fixture, so this is pretty much what you're gonna be able to try to tie everything back to. So what we've got here is we've got our trainer. And as you can see, we've got clear pipe set up, so you can actually see what it looks like on the inside. Now we're not gonna do a lot with the clear pipe here today, but I'm gonna show you how the toilet mounts to the flange, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the way you make the tie-in and what the reasons are. So what we've got here is a sanitary tee. So at the end of the line, literally, and I say the end of the line, it may be a branch line, it could be anything at all, but this is your sanitary sewer. Now, we've got it built up close enough that we can actually use this for different things, but what would happen here is this line would come out and tie into the rest of the sewer line. Now, what we have here is three inch. If I was plumbing my own personal house, I would probably use four inch just because I want that bigger pathway. I want things to be able to drain clearly. But for the trainer purposes, we did three inch just to show people what it'll do and how it'll work. So this is your sanitary tee. And this comes up off your sewer line and then you've got your T part. This comes over and turns up and goes to four inch and comes up to your flange. Now I'll show you that in just a moment, but what I wanna show you here is one of the most important parts. This is actually the vent. Coming up off the top of here, this actually goes up through the roof. And what this does is this allows air to come in, it allows an atmospheric balance of pressure, that way the P-trap right here in your toilet doesn't go dry. It doesn't get sucked out. This vent keeps that atmospheric pressure there and it allows sewer gases to go out the roof instead of coming into your house. I'll show you some other fittings here in a moment, but if you had a tub or shower right here close to it, the fitting that you could put in here would be a Wisconsin. It is actually a sanitary tee with a side inlet. Now, another thing you could do is actually cut a Y in. So what you could actually do is, say you had a tub or a shower further over, or even the lavatories. Now this is a three inch Y. It could be a three by two, but what you could do is install this, come over and stub another line up. Now, if you've got a tub or a shower, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna actually put a Santee in under the floor because your drain is gonna be caught down there and then you're gonna have a vent pipe coming out the top. Now, if it was lavatories, what you would actually do is come over and just 90 up because your Santee is gonna be up high where it comes over and catches your drain. Now, the other way is with the Wisconsin fitting I was talking about, with the side inlet. So if I had a tub right here, I could have a side inlet coming out. If it was shower, I'd wanna run two inch over. If it's a tub, I could run inch and a half. But what that does is that actually lets this drain into this sanitary tee, come out, go out, and it vents both fixtures right here. And this two inch vent is big enough for the two of them. Now, one thing that I do down here, a lot of plumbers will turn just three inch up and have a three inch flange. What I like to use is a three by 490. Now this is the only place in a plumbing system you're actually allowed to go from four inch down to three inch and be okay. Normally you don't decrease your size, normally you increase your size as you go further. That's what she said. But this is the place that they allow that. And I like that because that gives me a good four inch opening right there coming out of my toilet. Gives me a smaller chance for a clog there. Now remember a while ago I said, if I was plumbing my own house, I would run four inch all the way. So there would be no reduction here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand up right here and go ahead and just pull this toilet off and show you what the flange looks like, where it ties on, and where you'd actually set the toilet. So up top, this would actually be like your bathroom floor. Now, we installed this flange on top of the wood, which is what you would wanna do on your finished floor in your bathroom. You don't want the flange setting down in the tile or anything like that. But this toilet, we don't have a wax ring on it yet. We don't have it hooked up. This is just for display. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and just lift the toilet off and set it over here. So what we have here is a toilet flange. Now, this is very important. In an older house, you may have lead or something turned up and you have brass 
the brass flange itself actually soldered to it. Nowadays, when plumbers come in and repipe it or change things out, we normally go plastic just because it's easier to work with, it's cheaper, and it's gonna last longer. If you do have a brass flange and it's soldered on lead and you see that it's coming apart, you probably wanna call a plumber and have a new flange installed, have it resoldered. That way, nothing comes loose and you don't have any problems in the future. A lot of times, the older flanges, if the tool has been changed out a few times or it got loose and people just tried to tighten it up, it'll pull that flange up and separate it from the lead, and that can actually be causing a leak under there. When you are plumbing a bathroom, you wanna make sure that you get this to where there is no leak. What I like about this and setting it up on top of the tile, wood, whatever top floor that you have, set that on top, you're gonna to put a bowl wax down, your toilet bolts, then you're gonna attach your toilet to it, cut the bolts down and cut them off. One reason that this is important is that if this leaks under here, it can actually leak and eat away at your foundation, it can leak and get under your floor, it can actually get back in the walls. And this is class three water because it's toilet water. So you wanna make sure that this is something you really do right each and every time. The toilet bolts, these are 5 16 bolts, which normally come with the toilets if they come with them. I like to increase these to quarter inch. The reason is they're a little bit more solid, they're brass, they're good, they're not gonna rust, and once you cut them down, put your caps on, you're not gonna have any problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back in position, but one thing that you can tell is with this big four inch opening here and the smaller size here on the bottom of the toilet, once you put your bowl wax on here, you've got plenty of room here. Remember I said I don't like to go three inch and I've actually seen some plumbers go three inch and glue a flange on the inside of that. So you do, you start restricting that flow path. I like the fact that these toilets with the opening, you put this on a four inch, it's gonna be wide open and the chance of having a blockage here, you've pretty much eliminated it. Now, another thing that you need to know, when you're roughing in this toilet, this riser for the flange, you wanna make sure that you know where your wall is and you wanna check your measurement coming out. More than likely, you wanna rough this in at 12 inches off the wall. If the one you have is roughed in at 10, you may rough it in at 10 if you're gonna keep your existing toilet. 10 inch and 12 inch are the two measurements for toilet rough ends. 12 is normal. If you're thinking about going ahead and upgrading everything, which if you're plumbing a bathroom right now, you probably wanna go ahead and do that. What I would do is rough it in at 12 inches, pick out a new toilet and get everything fixed and done right. Now, if you're doing a tub, shower, anything like that, upgrade your fixtures at this time. Toilet, whatever it is, upgrading now can make everything worthwhile. That's about the most important thing to remember. If you've roughed in a bathroom, or if you tried to plumb your own bathroom, tell me what kind of problems did you run into? We talked about branching off down here to catch a tub or shower. If you're taking plastic and you're tying it on a cast iron or something, there's adapters to where you can convert from cast iron to plastic as long as you have good pipe to tie the plumbing to. Once you've got this line above the floor, you can actually cut a sanitary tin and go over and catch a lavatory depending on how far away it is. How to plumb a bathroom really is pretty easy if you do things right. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what problems did you have if you've done this and if you haven't done it, what would you do different? I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next bathroom if you don't get flushed.